Good morning. Good morning. I do not 100% know where we're streaming to right now. <laughs> we're streaming to our scheduled location or if we're just streaming on the Facebook page. Um, surprise, I had a technical difficulty. So, um, okay. <laughs> so we're here. Hopefully somebody somewhere will. Well, Liz found us. Hey, Hi, Liz. Liz. Okay, we must be okay enough where we are. Okay. Um, <laughs> All right, good. Thank you. <laughs> um, well, hey, Leah, how are you doing this morning? I'm good. Tired yeah. this morning. Yeah, yeah. This, this crazy weather. I don't know. I, I, it, with, with all the rain, and I just want to snuggle in bed. Like, that's where I want to be. I want to be in bed, snuggling with my puppy, and just forget yeah. about it. <laughs> how yeah. are you? That would be nice. Um, yeah, I, I mean... Okay, everyone in my life knows that I have a headache right here, right behind <laughs> my eye, and I've had it for days because of the weather. Um, so other than that, I'm okay. We had our Zoom meeting this morning, and I kept my camera off because I just, I knew I needed to be on here, and I didn't know how much eye train I could take this morning. Um, so I was there, but I kept my camera off. I tilted my thing to the side, and I just looked out my window instead. I relaxed my eyes. And looked into the distance. <laughs> Liz says, at least our state isn't on fire. That's no true. <laughs> we have to count our blessings. Liz right. definitely has some fires in her region. And not to bring her, not to make her this on the spot, but uh, she also sent me a picture that she had a bat in a, her boot, like a rain boot. You like It's in the top and it's just like hanging on the top of her rain boot. <laughs> so, you know... <laughs> This has the most fun. I swear. I know, right? Uh, I, spiders in my shoe are usually my main concern. You know, yeah. like I haven't worn a shoe in a while. I'm like looking down it. I'm like, okay, is there a spider in there? I've never thought to look for a bat. So <laughs> it was Andy's boot. It was her husband's boot. So I guess it's no big deal then. <laughs> I don't. I don't know that I've ever woken up to an animal in my shoe. In my so. Yeah, we should all count ourselves lucky for that. Because, yeah. Although I suppose you probably wake up with animals doing all kinds of things as a pet owner. So sometimes, yeah. you know. Yeah. There's nothing that gets me out of bed faster than the sound of a dog vomiting. Like, because it takes them a minute. And if you can catch them soon enough, you can get them like out of your bed. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, that's not, that's not pleasant. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll tell on one of my other friends who's not on on here right now, but she recently had her cat. This is really gross. I don't know why we're talking about this, but she her, her cat wake her up throwing up and also had worms in it. Oh. And so it's like middle of the night. It's everything about that, but then also the added horror that it turns out your cat has worms. <laughs> <laughs> threw them up, so. Yeah. Luckily, worms are pretty easy to get rid of, you know? This is but it's true. But at two in the morning or whenever that happens, it's, it's a bad time to discover that. Like you already feel like you're in the worst case scenario, but now it's like, oh, it turns out it could be worse. <laughs> and, yeah. it, and it is. It is. <laughs> so anyway, okay, so now that we've covered all the disgusting faces. Right. <laughs> um, we wanted to talk about oh I love your mug. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I love it. I love it so much. Oh, yeah. that's great. I don't even, this is how serious I am about my head hurting. I don't even have coffee this morning because oh. at the point, I know, but it's at the point where caffeine, I've had some this morning, but just a little bit, but you know how sometimes it just kind of like makes it worse. So uh, I'm serious about this. Um, so we're going to talk about what we were looking forward to reading. Yeah. What next, what we have to be read. I always have a very, there's not even a word, significant. I, significant is the word I was going to use, but there's not even a word to encompass <laughs> the number of books that surround me at any given time because I do right. buy books. I think a lot of people who work in libraries kind of just use the library because that makes really good yeah. sense, but I continue to buy them. So yes. I have all the books I bring home from the library and all the books I used books I buy because mm -hmm. I buy them used in it. It's just, they're just everywhere. Right. Yeah. I'm, I, I, I love picking up new books. Um, I, I really like picking up books from like, like the book sale that look new, 
but aren't. So I'm not paying the new book price because, you know, I don't want to pay the new book price. Especially <laughs> I work in a library and I can do it for free. But I like being surrounded by books. So I do still find myself um, splurging. And I, I do visit bookstores and I do buy new books. So I'm not, I'm not totally anti-book. But yeah, <laughs> I love getting, having books around. Yeah. I like used books mainly for the price, obviously, but um, also because I like it when books are a little worn because I like them having like a life behind them. And I like the fact that I don't ever have to worry about messing them up. One of my friends recently loaned me a book for a book club that we were, were in together and she loaned me a copy of it because I couldn't get a copy from the library in time. And she gave me her copy and it was like hardback and pristine. And I was like, <laughs> Oh, I don't know about this. And it's I mean, I check out plenty of library books. I am very careful with them. I don't like wipe my mouth on them or anything. Right. There's yeah. just like this level of shit. I mean, the corners were crisp, but I was like, did I read in bed? I don't, I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm always afraid to mess up someone else's book. I actually I don't care about. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm ashamed to say I someone, she gave me a book that she loved. She's like, I love this story. You will love it. And I forgot to return it before I moved. Oh no! And I never, I never gave her her book back. I'm so embarrassed. I'm and thinking to issue a public apology right here, right now, to rectify this. Oh, so, I am so sorry that I never give you back your book. <laughs> um, I will find it online and buy you a copy. <laughs> I'm sure, if she really loved it, she's probably replaced it at this point. Probably, but. I do. Yeah. I feel so guilty. Yeah, I I know. And so my own books, I definitely don't care about what happens to them. I kind of would rather like be able to feel relaxed and toss them on the floor or eat while I'm reading or something than have to worry about it. But I know for many people, and it's not like I don't care about them. They're very important possessions to me. But like for many people, I completely get it. They're, you want to keep them pristine. So I, I as soon as the library copy of that book came back in, came in, I was like, ooh, I'm gonna put this away. <laughs> you can always tell when people are eating with the library book, you know, there are smudges on the pages and you know, a little bit of that doesn't bother me. The thing I hate that people do with library books is take them to the beach. And then they come back with sand and grit in them. And there's so much like in the cover, you have to like read it. Yes, yes. We, get, we get books in them, we get a nice little shipment. This year, not so much. Uh, most right? years, yeah. a nice little shipment in the summertime, you know, a book will show up and I'll be like, oh, sand on the cover. And so then we take the jacket off, we clean it out, we put the jacket, put a new jacket on. And, and yeah. some people have a very different idea of what is a beach read from what I, I want <laughs> fluff. I want romance. I want fluff. I don't want to think. People take these like serious history tones, <laughs> like, you know, 600 pages of the Greek empire. I'm like, <laughs> Really? Like that's what you're going to read on the beach? And that's a good point because it was clearly a beach read. There's no denying it was a beach read because right. you got sand in the cover and the pages are wavy from salt water. Like that's that's not a beach read. Cheeto dust. Harry chimed in with Cheeto yeah, dust. There's, mm -hmm. Orange yeah. Cheeto dust. I have seen so much of that on books. It's Yeah, Cheeto dust. And um, sometimes I had a, something recently I was working on and there was an actual defined thumbprint. Like I could see like the worlds and from <laughs> presumably Cheeto or Dorito or some type of cheesy dust. Um, I know a lot of people who are on here have worked in libraries or currently work in libraries. And I'm sure everyone has, has something that's like their worst discovery <laughs> in a library. Yeah, I don't want to talk about that. That's fine. We don't have to talk about them, but for me, it really is that food stuff that like really, I don't like discovering personally, or like when there's like crumbs, like actual crumbs in it, but not even just like breadcrumbs, but like a crumb of, you don't even know what it is. Yeah. yeah. I would have had to go through and like flick out crumbs. Like. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> stains, you know, and I'm glad people are enjoying their lives and, yeah, their yeah. lives and enjoying their food, but um, we do try to stay on top of those things at the library. How did we end up on something disgusting again? <laughs> It's not at all what we were planning on talking about. No. <laughs> Liz says you could go all CSI on the on the 
print <laughs> and look at it and, it or not. and tell them, be nice to library books. Believe it or not, I did not. Um, but actually, and it wasn't, I actually think it wasn't even our item. I think it was something else that I had checked out personally. And I was like, mm, I'm going to wipe this down. Um, but <laughs> yes, I totally could have. Yeah. So what, um, you go first. What's something you're looking forward to reading? Um, something that I'm, my first one, I'm going to start off with my shame. I love I shame. I this book 10 years ago. I, this has been on my bookshelf for 10 years, and I haven't read it yet. Um, it is pristine, you know, no wrinkles, the cover no. is perfect, <laughs> and I have had it for 10 years. Um, I, I actually remember the day I was at the store buying it, but um, I, w I went through this phase. I'm like, you know, I'm probably like classics that I haven't read yet. And I just, I've never brought myself to read it. And it's one of those books. There are so many references to it and, you know, out there, like you watch a movie and they'll, they'll, they'll be like a Holden character. And like, there's just so oh, many yeah. it that I feel like I'm missing something having not read it. Mm -hmm. and I just, I'll say um, my personal opinion, you're not missing a single thing. It's just <laughs> a teenage story. Personally, that's how I thought about when I read it as a teenager and I can't imagine rereading it now, but that is just me. Um, and I think also that you have probably uh, um, absorbed enough of the references that reading the book will not Give you anything else? Because that's how I felt about Star Wars. I didn't watch Star Wars, any of the Star Wars movies till I was in my 20s. And I was like, oh, well, I already know this story. So it, it, it didn't, you know, um, plus the special effects are terrible. So, And I want to say one thing about this book. I'm very upset with J.D. Salinger's son. Um, he's got the, he owns the rights to this book. And he recently made it available um, as an ebook. Because for a long time, he, he wouldn't even do that. Like, I think it was only like last year that it became available. Or maybe earlier this year. I don't know. But recently, very recently, it it's now an ebook, And you can get it on your, like on your Kindle or your, from the library. Yeah. Um, but he refuses to make it available as an audiobook, And I, I really prefer to listen to books. Like, I love the, the emotion behind the words. You know, I just... I, I love audiobooks. I'm audiobooks. If I've got my choice, I'm going to read it as a, an audiobook. Um, and he won't make it available as an audiobook because he doesn't consider that reading. Um, he's very snobbish about it. And I think that makes him a bit of a jerk because listening is just as good as reading. And sometimes it's even better. And there are all kinds of reasons why someone might want to read the book rather than. I mean, listen to the book rather than read it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, for some reason, what about blind people? Do they not deserve to hear this book? Right. right. Just, and, you know, some people just absorb it better. Mm -hmm. And she prefers audiobooks. Mm -hmm. Make it available as an audiobook, and so many more people will read it. Yeah, and definitely. Robbery. And for that reason, I'm There's not going to never read it. You can just read the Wikipedia page. The book that I have. I just tossed it across the room. <laughs> Perfect. Um, <laughs> um, the book, another book that I brought, I have, I brought a little pile here of stuff I could talk about depending on how much time we had. Um, and the book that I brought, one, one that I have here, I'll talk about because I also bought it. I don't know how many years ago, but I bought it from Walden Books in the mall, if that tells you something, Ooh, because that was oh, yeah. for a really, really, really long time. It got it at the bargain table at Walden Books. It's Daniel Wallace's The Watermelon King. He's the author of Big Fish, which is also a movie. Ooh, I love and that movie. Yes. I never read the book, but I did see the movie, and I really liked the movie Big Fish, and I probably bought this book right after seeing the movie Big Fish, is my guess. Um, and I have not read it. And <laughs> I've had it all that time. I've moved it. I moved it from place to place to place with me, always intending to read it. And so it was actually on my list this year. Like, if you only read one thing, Allison, read this book. And I haven't yet. And it's August. So we'll see. But um, that that was the first thing I thought of. I was like, you got to do that one. 
You have to read it. So we'll yeah. see. <laughs> I clearly don't have 100% confidence in myself, probably like 60% at this point. But. Um, I, I, I've had this book for um, quite a few years. Uh, okay, we got it at the library in 2013 as this is the advanced reading copy. Yeah. It's, we get those sometimes. They're like uncorrected proofs of books that are coming out in a few months. Um, and I picked it up then perks to working in a library for me anyway, even though we don't get that many, it's not like it's a massive perk. It just makes me feel excited. <laughs> I, know. I love, I love getting the, the, the arcs. Um, so I've had this book since 2013 and I love Jojo boys. I love her books. Like I have read several of them. I can't even tell you how many of them. I just, I don't know why. I think because I'm like, Oh, I put that book on my shelf at home. I'll, I'll read that copy. I just keep thinking, oh, I'm going to read that. And I don't. So, like, this is one of those books, like, it looks wonderful. And it looks fabulous. And I don't know why. I've had it for seven years and haven't read it yet. But this is in my to-be-read pile this year. Very nice. I think I do that, too, sometimes with things. I do it with watching things, too. But, like, something that I know I'm going to like, mm -hmm. I just I just put off reading it or watching it because it's like, well, I, I look forward to it. So I'm saving it. Yeah, I'm saving it. And then somehow I never read it. And so I don't know, maybe it's that giveaway with her since you know, you're going to like it. It's yeah. not. Yeah. And I think there are times when like you, you, you know, it's also probably going to be very emotional because her, her books are like that. You sometimes have to be in the right mood for that. And yeah. Yeah. Um, sometimes yeah. you're like, am I, yeah, am I, ready to deal with that, to feel that way today. And if the answer mm -hmm. is no, you're like, well, yeah, I definitely have arcs of things that have long been published. And yeah. I still haven't read the arc or the published copy, which theoretically are probably very similar. But yeah, they just um, sit there. And I also am on the, um, the hold it list for that author. So all of her new stuff automatically. Get get it. So that book got checked out to me and I still have. <laughs> I know, I know. And that's, and that's how you and I probably get most of our books is, or book ideas or things that we want to read or whatever is because we, we, you, you select them and then I place the order. So I see what we're ordering and I'm like, Oh, I want to read that one. I want to read that one. I want to read that one. But in reality, what usually happens is I check them out for three weeks and then I return them without opening them. But I remember that I wanted to read it. Yeah, like my, 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 my holds list, like it worked, like I had to stop because I would just get like all of this new stuff in and like, I don't have time to read seven new books this in the next three weeks. Days, right? I know. So um, I kind of stopped just putting stuff on hold when I saw it because that just didn't work for me. Because I wonder what, what that would be like if I did that. That might be good. <laughs> there are so many books that I want to read. I, there's, there's no way in the world I have time to read this. Yes. I know, I know. The next book I'll just pull. I have so I have like a mix of library books and a mix of and I'm afraid if I pull from the middle of the stack it will all topple and it'll be a thing. I don't know. We'll see here. Um we'll see what I can what I well, I'll just I won't do that. Um the next book I have on the list is uh, it's a biography of George Washington called You Never Forget Your First by Alexis Coe. And um I've never read a biography of that one. I know he's like pulling on his little Collar. And I love the title. It just is so cute. I, I you know. So um, I've never read a biography of George Washington before. So I thought, well, this one is manageable. <laughs> um, and she does, she does kind of, I think she's trying to approach it um, in an updated way and acknowledging that the number of biographies of George Washington that have written by, been written by women is starting startlingly small. And um, just, I'm just kind of excited to see what this what this is yeah. like. So um, I've had this one checked out, and it, I was able to renew it. So I'm hoping that I'm able to. <laughs> and I think a lot of like biographies of Washington kind of gloss over some of the not so. And I think that yeah, I think she was going to address some of that yeah. stuff. So, yeah. um, but I'm interested to see where a book with such a sassy title. <laughs> <laughs> it's got an attitude too, right? I mean, more that you can tell that just looking at the cover of the book. <laughs> I know. Yes. Um, my next book, 
I'm a little ashamed of. No, it's never be ashamed. Not because, not because um, I, I haven't read this book, but because it's in my to be read pile again. <laughs> I love this series and I have been thinking about it a lot. Gina, no. uh, Son of the Cave Bear. I love this series. And it's one of those series that I go back and I reread like every like seven years or so. I, I have to go back and reread this series and fall in love with Ayla and Jean Delar all over again. And then get really, really angry when I get to book four because the the editor of that book kind of was like, ah, oh, spell check do this and I'm gonna go on vacation. And like a character whose name is Brune throughout the rest of the series is suddenly Bran and and like four fifths of the book. And then at the end of the book is back to Brune. Like the, the editing and book four is atrocious and it makes me angry every time I get to book four. And then I get to book five and I'm in love with the series again. But whoever was the editor of book four, you did a bad job. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. And I, I bought the ebook when it came out as ebooks. I even bought the ebook series because I'm like, you know what? This is the smallest book in the series and they just get bigger from here. Yeah. You know, bigger. And so. You know. Yeah. Well, because when I picture that book, I've never read that series, but I've definitely seen it around. And I, when I picture it, I picture that mass market size, and they're like, <laughs> they're like gigantic. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I think um, the hardback is the way to go, or the ebook. Yeah. The audiobooks are good too, but even in the audiobook, like the reader reads what's on the page, so it's brand. And oh, don't even get me started. But um, what was I saying? Oh, even the ebook, like they didn't go back and do like any re-editing. So it's got the same issues and it's. I would have thought that they would have corrected that in the ebook. And I also would have thought they would have reissued the fourth one by now with. An it, it makes me angry every time I read that series, but I love it so much that I let it go. Yeah. And that is really annoying. I've never, so I've never had that. With, with book four, like. I could go through with a red pen and mark it up and send it to the publisher. Like, fix it. You should do that. Had 20 years, fix it. You should do that. So my, let's see, what do I pick next? I, I, I didn't do them in the right order. Um, this book is new. Um, I don't typically read a lot of romances, but um, it's called One to Watch. And, um, to read. and it's basically about like a bachelor bachelorette type of show. And so the woman is going, who's going to be on it, um, I believe might be like the first like plus size bachelorette or whatever, something like that is the premise of this. And um, there's an audiobook narrator. There is who? an audio. Oh, I don't know who it is. Who, what, who's, the, who's the narrator? Because I don't know. I'm, well, I want her to answer, not you. <laughs> okay, me, because we're on a show together. <laughs> um, no, so there, but there is an audiobook version of this, and um, I'm on hold for it in case that comes in first before I get a chance to read this. I have a very hard time sitting down and reading something like this. Something that is light has a really mm -hmm. good time holding my attention, but an audio is really great to listen to um, around the house while I'm doing dishes and things like that. So I'm kind of hoping I get the audiobook version, but I have this one in case it doesn't come in. Yes, Fairfield County, they read the typos. It's They read what's on the page. Greg Dort. I'm going to have to look him up and see if I've read anything by him. Yeah. I listen to any, because I do, I listen to so many audiobooks. It's probably very likely. Yeah, sorry, I had missed that whole comment thing because I was talking, surprise. Um, but that's very oh, exciting. Yeah. Liz knows an audiobook narrator. Someone in um, our novel conversation group also knows an audiobook narrator and talks about how peaceful of a job it is, which I can imagine. I um, went to uh, the Midwest Tape headquarters. Um, they do Midwest Tape and Hoopla. And it's also... Um, they record audio. They have a, a booth there for um, Dreamscape audiobooks. Um, 
a lot of their their a lot of book narrators have like their own setups in their house, but they've got one there in this in the in in their 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 location. And it's so cool. Like you go in there and it's just like you can hear your blood pumping. It's so quiet. There are like all these sound absorbing tiles on the wall. Like even the floor like is like this weird floating floor. Like it so that it like it's so silent in that video. Cool. And I got to uh, try my hand at recording an audiobook and I have um, much anxiety about reading aloud. And <laughs> it was not a good combination, but yes, so. Did you see Andrea update you on who the narrator is? Um, she, she said, Greg. No, Andrea updated you on who the narrator of One to Watch is. Oh, yes. Kristen, I don't know that one. Well, we'll probably all find out, right? It sounds like several of us, us had planned to read it. So, what do you have next? Um, this this one has been out for a while. Um, the Girl Who Chased the Moon by Sarah Addison Allen. I love her books. They are they are so like there's always like trouble. There's an issue of some sort, but they her books are just like magical, and they are they're mad. There's like an element of the supernatural, like mm -hmm. you know, in them. Yeah. But um, I don't know. It just. Her books yeah. just leave me feeling so good and hopeful, and I, I just love her book. So, The Girl Who Chased yeah. the Moon is on my list. That, I'm sorry, did I? Is that new? Like, no, uh -uh. gotcha. Um, my next one that I have here, I've had, I've tried to have this checked out for a really long time, but it keeps renewing. It's not our copy, so if it, it's so it, it even keeps renewing despite the fact that it's not our copy, which I would have preference on ours anyway, but like. So anyhow, um, and it is called The Less People Know About Us, and it is um, true story, a memoir. And yeah. the that one looked good. What? That one looked good. Yeah. yeah, and so basically the premise is that this family, um, the parents' identities were stolen, and so growing up, the author of the book, they had to move around a few different times. Um, basically everything was just taken from them, and the identity thief, just kept finding them. And so then when she became an adult, um, she found out that her identity had also been stolen. And so she basically then, you know, tries to find out who is responsible for it. And I believe that there is some type of a twist. I don't know what it will be. And I don't know if I should speculate on here. I have an idea of what it will be, but, um, but it did, it just, it looked really good and like a really intriguing story, um, family, drama and intrigue and things like that. So um, I, I've, I've read good things about it too. So I am I am hopeful that I'll read that. <laughs> um, my next book is also one with family drama. Yeah. Um, it's called Playing Nice by J.P. Delaney. Um, I like I like um, Delaney's books. This one, I, it's, it's brand new. I think it I think it may have come out today, which is odd because it's a Friday and usually books come out on Tuesdays, but I think the date said the 28th, but mm -hmm. I could be wrong about that. Maybe, maybe it was July 28th. Maybe that's when it, I don't know, but it's new this summer. So I don't have a copy of it in my hands yet. Yeah. It's called Playing Nice. It's about um, these two families and their children were switched at birth, oh. but they were separate for a few years. Yeah. So in order to like not upset the children's lives so much, they decide not to switch the babies back, but to just become more involved in each other's lives. But then things happen and July 28th was a Tuesday. It was probably July 28th. <laughs> Fact checking. Thank you, Liz. <laughs> Thank you, Liz. We appreciate it. <laughs> um, that was probably July. But anyway, so like, yes, but there's all kind of like drama. And, yeah. and I think something happens, but I haven't, don't have it yet so I don't I don't know I just remember the the baby swap the baby twin. swap there's nothing like a good twin swap as the parent trap has taught us <laughs> so that wasn't really a swap it was more just a I didn't know I had a twin but somehow she looks exactly like me um my final book I'll talk about is the one I'm currently reading and it's called leaving Richard's Valley and it's a graphic and um by Michael you can't see it it's fine though um by you could just believe me that it's a graphic novel <laughs> by Michael DeForge. And I've read, I think everything Michael DeForge has drawn. 
um, because his drawings are just, I'm trying to find a, they're just like really unique. And the cover, you can, I wish I could show you the cover because that's actually more, it's more like what he normally does is that he draws like a ton of really tiny little patterned things, but the cover is like silver and shiny, so it won't show on here. Um, but it is about like these creatures who don't really look much like creatures in real life, but there's a raccoon, a dog, a rabbit, a squirrel, a spider, a snake, and the snake is named Snake Mark. Um, and they live in this valley with what it seems to be like a cult leader named Richard, and then they have to leave the valley um and so it's about them like entering the world after being in this like cult in richard's valley i it's unusual um but all his stuff is unusual and i really do always like it so i was very excited to have that and mary commented his name there and so i do i have a feeling mary might want this one when i'm done with it um she and i typically share slash jump on the graphic novels when they come in well speaking of cults that will bring me to my last book and then I, we can let everybody go because we've, we've talked our time. I will admit I'm really looking forward to reading Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer. I loved the um, um, Twilight Saga books. I, I will admit I loved them. I loved going to the movies. I loved watching them. Um, and I may have been the person who in the movie theater when Edward says, doesn't he own a shirt about uh, Jacob said, I hope not. And <laughs> full volume and everyone around me in the theater laughed. I was at the midnight preview for, uh, of that show. And uh, <clears throat> that may have happened. I will not um, deny that, but- Neither yeah. confirm nor deny whether or not that happened. <clears throat> But it was one of those series that Becky had been recommending to me for like a while. And um, uh, I was just like, I hadn't, I hadn't read them. I hadn't read them. And then like, I was like a week later, I was like, oh my God, I'm on Breaking Dawn. She's like, you can't start with that one. I'm like, no, 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 no. I've listened to all of the other ones. I'm, it's, she was like, you read all of those already? I'm like, I don't have a life. So yeah. But um, <laughs> That's awesome. But yeah, so um, I'm I'm excited to to read Breaking Dawn. Although what the, what leaked years ago, I did read that, and it was like the first couple chapters. Um, so I've already started it. So this, is, this is Twilight told from Edward's perspective, correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I will admit. Are you? I think it's already out. Are you on hold yeah. for it? Okay. Um, not yet because um, I'm in the middle of another book series that I want to finish first. The yeah. Randall Silvis, um, Ryan DeMarco, detective, detective Ryan DeMarco. No, he's a trooper. He's he's state police. Um, <clears throat> trooper Ryan DeMarco. I'm in the middle of that series. I want to finish that series before I go back. Is that what you were listening to that one day when we were on here? Yes. When we were on here before. So we get on here beforehand and make sure that like video is working and everything. And in the background, Leah can't stop listening to the audio that she's listening to. And I'm like in the other room and I'm like, is that something in my house that's going off? But no, she's just listening to her audio book over, over this platform. Sorry. <laughs> she was addicted. Don't, don't tell people that because then that's like sharing and that's a violation of copyright. I forgot you were there. <laughs> I don't worry. It wasn't for my benefit that she was playing. <laughs> Oh man, well, it was great to talk about books. Susan says it's, oh, and she's retired now. That's great. So it's nice to see people talking about books and that's what we think too. It's just fun to talk about books. So if you have any suggestions, please share them. If you have any themes for books you'd like to talk about, let us know. If you want to share what books you're looking forward to reading. Yeah. If you want to tell me, I'm really, if you want to tell me I'm totally wrong about not liking Catcher in the Rye, go for it. I just feel like at this point overblown and not much different than any other book about a teenager personally but that uh, i i know that i'm not right about a lot of things so allison you're right no. about everything 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 <laughs> even when we disagree and i'm right about everything i know we're both right about everything all the time which is incredible that's probably why we're such good friends right yeah exactly <laughs> All right, guys. Well, sorry for keeping you while we ramble, but uh, we'll see you next week. Same time, same place. See ya. <laughs> Bye.